Max Verstappen is a centurion. I think it's about time. The reigning world champion secured victory with ease at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, marking his 56th F1 win and his 100th podium in the category overall. From RacingNews365.com, my name is Nick Golding, and joining me, as always, to discuss all the topics from today on and not so much off the circuit for, for a change, which is quite nice, is none other than lead editor Ian Parks. Ian, Max yet again in a different league 100th F1 podium, 56th win. He, he's going to go all the way and win all 24. Well, I was going to say, probably won't be too long before he actually chokes up 100 Grand Prix victories at this particular <laughs> rate. But again, you just have to take your hat off to Red Bull and Max. They've, they finished last season in such dominant fashion and they've developed that RB20. It was a gamble that they took with regard to, you know, changing the concept of that car from going out of the RB19, which as we know, is the most dominant car in Formula One history. Well, that could now very, very quickly be usurped by the RB20 because it is, as Toto Wolf put it after the race, just so far ahead of the competition. It is ludicrous right now. And... Look, I, I don't want to uh, be downbeat or critical or anything like that. I'm not going to be like that because, as I say, there are times in sport when you just have to pretty much doff your cap to a team, to a driver. And this is just one of those occasions. It is now up to everybody else to do what they can over the course of this season to limit that gap and hope that at some point over the course of this season, that RB20 has a blip, Max has a blip, and it gives them an opportunity to score a victory. But as we stand at this point, two dominant poles, two dominant victories, just sublime from Red Bull and Max Verstappen. Well, you hit the nail on the head. It's not that, you know, we're not anti-Red Bull, we're not anti-Max. You know, yeah. they have done a phenomenal job. Arguably, it's, you know, the best car now in the history of F1, potentially again. And Max is having one of the most successful periods in the history of the sport. It's amazing, but obviously... You know, we and I imagine all the fans want to see close racing. And actually, for any, you know, Max or Rebel fans watching, I'd be really intrigued to know, you know, would you rather Max be winning titles in the dominant fashion he is with six or seven races to go? Or would you rather be winning the championship through, you know, a title fight where it goes down to, the, say, the final two or three races? Please let us know in the comments. It's going to be really interesting. Obviously, it was a Rebel 1 2, but we're going to move on to the star driver, the man who. I think has earned himself a few pennies today. Oliver Behrman stood in for Carlos Sainz yesterday. He obviously has undergone a successful operation for appendicitis. Was in the paddock today, which is quite remarkable, actually. That was that, that caught you know. everybody by surprise. <laughs> nobody, nobody expected that at all to see Carlos um, um, with a little but, bit of a limp, but uh, yeah. understandably so. But the fact that he was out of hospital just what. 24 hours after undergoing the surgery oh, I wouldn't remarkable. be <laughs> <laughs> I would be there for at least I think a week uh, but yeah. Behrman P7 ahead of Norris ahead of Hamilton you know two of the quickest drivers in the sport I mean he's going to be on the grid next year for sure come on he's got to be I asked Fred Vasseur that I actually asked Oli Behrman that as well and of course it, as you can expect they're not going to rush into doing anything right now. Oli, of course, wants to concentrate on his F2 campaign, which quite naturally has been has taken quite a hit. Uh, no points. He was going to start on pole for the F2 feature, as yeah. you well know. He would <laughs> I'd have, rather he, drive in a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He would arguably have scored a good number of points, but he's obviously on the back foot. He knows that. In fairness, there's still plenty of rounds to go. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that he could still go and end up winning the F2 title this season. But as you say, the next best, no, not the next best thing, the obvious uh, best thing for him is that he, get, he got to drive that Ferrari uh, across the course of this weekend and to qualify just outside of the top 10. Slight mistake, as we know, in Q2. Uh, cost him that few hundreds that would have got him into a top 10 place it would have outqualified Lewis Hamilton and then he just drove a superb race pretty much faultless did everything that was absolutely asked of him and now it's back to the grindstone for him he's going to get a few FPE opportunities over the course of this season 
Fred's uh, has conceded that. And I did ask Fred, can we look at him to Haas next season? Because obviously, the two uh, say these the two Ferrari seats, of course, are taken with Lewis joining Charles Leclerc at the Scuderia next season. Fred actually dead batted it, bless him. And it's just a case of him taking his time now over the course of the season. He's got to build from here. He's been given a fabulous platform, fabulous opportunity. Will he be in F1 next season? He's certainly yes. putting himself in the shot window for that. That's without a shadow of a doubt. There was a lot of talk coming into this, actually, after it had been confirmed that he was going to get the drive for the weekend and people were saying, oh no, this is this is too soon. It's You can't do this to him. But in fairness, he got the sighter uh, in driving here in FP2, you know, in qualifying and in practice. So he was actually in the best possible position. At least he was fully aware of the track, what the possibilities were, and he delivered, both in qualifying and the Grand Prix. He's had the weekend of his life and hopefully this is now the stepping stone for him to build to a potential 2025 drive with the obvious possibility of him going to Haas because both Nico and Kevin, as we know, are out of contract at the end of this season. Those guys operate on a year-by-year -year basis. And I'm sure, Nick, from that point, that's now going to lead us into Haas and what they've done this season. Well, uh, this, this it, 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 time. It's, well it's funny you say that because... Looking ahead to the season, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were saying, you know, how Haas are in a bit of trouble. Well, in saying that, uh, once again, we've both been proven wrong. Nico Hulkenberg today, P10. Kevin Magnussen was P12, although actually had a 20-second time penalty for two separate incidents. Effectively, what happened is uh, Kevin realised he had the penalties. One was for running off the circuit and gaining an advantage. Another was for causing a collision. Um, so what Haas told him to do was hold everyone up behind him, allow Nico to escape in P10, and Bob's your uncle, a point for Haas. Unbelievable. And well done, Haas, because if you think of everything that they went through over the course of last season, and it really ended up being a miserable season from what was a relatively respectable start, and now they come into this second weekend and they score a highly respectable point. Nico Hulkenberg quite naturally thanked Kevin. Um, it was the obvious thing to do because what Kevin did was quite a, a grand gesture. And in fairness to Haas, they looked at the strategy, they called it, they told Kevin exactly how to play it. He did that to an absolute T, despite those penalties. It allowed Nico, after his late stop, because of course he ran long, uh, on the uh, medium tyre and switched to the hard and it worked out brilliantly for them and he, he brought home a well-deserved point so congratulations to us congratulations to Nico and to Ayo Kamatsu his first point as a Haas team principal or as a team principal in Formula 1 so well done to him as well well played boys Unjust on just his second race in charge as well. Um, looking elsewhere quickly, obviously Leclerc was P3, Piastri P4, Alonso P5. Uh, not too bad for the Spaniard. Uh, although the less said about his teammate, the better. Lance Stroll with a pretty nasty crash, actually, um, on lap six to turn 22. A corner which in the past has caught out Mick Schumacher and Leclerc. Wasn't a nice crash and really was the, the most exciting point of the Grand Prix because it triggered the only safety car where... Everyone pitted, barring Hamilton and Norris. Um, how was, you know, Lance after the race? Did, did he say anything at all? I don't know what they are. Just, just quickly interlude before, uh, before that. I thought I was on for my prediction of three safety so cars. So did I, actually. <laughs> and I thought, yes, that's number one ticked off. Surely there's going to be a couple more, but no. Just one of those things. It's what can happen, as we well know, with the street circuit. You've only got to kiss a wall which is exactly what Lance did it wasn't a hard hit he just clipped it it broke the wishbone on the on the left front right left front and front left it's been a long day it's fine <laughs> front left front left it has it's a bit long, long two weeks actually I've been on the road for nearly two weeks yeah and uh front left and that just pitched him out now I'd love to tell you what he said about it not that he would have said much because it's Lance Stroll but he didn't he decided not to do any written media pen interviews afterwards. So that gives you an idea of 
to just how well, I'm going to use the phrase pissed off he was to be honest <laughs> understandably so not a happy bunny just one of those things might crack the Aston Martin team principal said it it's street circuits for you it's walls you we know what these places are like the smallest mistake ends up with the biggest consequences and that's exactly what happened with Lance Looking elsewhere, Russell P6. Obviously, we spoke about Behrman P a bit. Oli Behrman P7, Norris in eighth, Hamilton in ninth. Uh, let's now talk off the circuit. Thankfully, not as much today um, because the Helmut Marco again said a few words. Obviously, following what happened yesterday, where we thought that there was a chance he could be suspended, that's now not the case. Well, it was all really strange what's occurred over this past 24 hours with regard to Helmut because it was he who brought this whole thing to the public attention because he did this interview with the Austrian television station ORS and during it he mentioned there was the possibility he could be suspended by um, the parent company Red Bull GM GmbH. We have to remember that Helmer is not a Red Bull Racing employee. He is a consultant and advisor with his contract held by, as I say, the parent company, Red Bull GmbH. So, all very strange his comments yesterday. And then going into the afternoon, all of a sudden, he and Oliver Minslaff, the Red Bull GmbH CEO, were, they walked into the paddock together, not quite hand in hand, like Christian Horner and Jerry Halliwell last week, ahead of the Bahrain Grand Prix, but <laughs> nevertheless, there they were together, and over the course of the afternoon, it emerged that Albert was not going to be suspended, that he was fine. Everything was, in fact, hunky-dory. So, a really strange situation. But the biggest thing to emerge out of this is that we still don't know what might happen with Max Verstappen. Christian Horner alluded to it again in his post-race session that at the end of the day, doesn't matter who has a contract, the length of that contract, Max's contract runs until the end of 2028. If somebody wants to leave, then they can do. They can be held to that contract, but at the end of the day, it doesn't do that person or the team any favours if they are held to that contract. Naturally, Christian does not expect Max to leave. Why would he? He's in the best car. He's with the best team. But you cannot stop somebody at the end of the day from going if they really want to. I don't think Max will go. This thing with Christian, of course, is still going to bubble away in the background for a little while longer. And for now, we are coming out of this tumult over the course of these two Grand Prix with the situation appearing to have died down a little bit, you still suspect there's going to be a bit more to run its course. But for now, for everything now, is fine. The main for now, thing. everything is fine with Max, with Yoss, with Helmut, with Christian. Some people, observers out there, might not like it. Uh, I'm sure that's the case. Our fans, our viewers... Um, but that's a, that's the a situation. That's the way it is at the moment. Things are fine for now. Until next week's episode. Um, speaking of backgrounds, I'm loving yours, by the way. It's, it's giving, I don't know. A little bit is of it, Saudi it, Arabia it, for you. They've, uh, it's set quite up, nice. Set up this tent uh, within <laughs> uh, just outside the media center area. So I just thought I'd give the fans a little bit something different. A little bit of well, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> well, obviously, we've now got a week off. There is no race next weekend. First double header is in the bag, done and dusted, excluding Red Bull and Alpine for quite obvious reasons. Who do you think will be happy with how they've started this season? Who not so much? Mercedes, definitely not so much. Agreed. <laughs> Toto, yeah, absolutely. Toto Wolf, um, again, talking about these first two races, they know that Come, coming into this season, they were they were confident that with what they'd done with that car would draw them closer to the front, to Red Bull. 
that quite clearly has not been the case. The one thing that Toto did state quite categorically when I asked him the question, because he talked about being really confident, 100% certain that his team would turn this around. And I said, well, why are you so confident on this occasion compared to the previous two years when you have said exactly the same thing? And it just really hasn't materialized. And he talked about the absolute belief that there is, that they are on the right path with this car. Okay, it's not brought them the results, both in qualifying and the Grand Prix that they'd expected. But they are absolutely certain that with what they have seen so far, that they will be able to unlock the potential within it that they were unable to do over the previous two seasons following the introduction of the new aerodynamic ground effect rules that were introduced at the start of 2022. He doesn't he did obviously um, caveat that by saying that, yes, they will get out of this. Yes, they are going to get toward back towards the front, but certainly they're not going to be in a position to challenge Red Bull anytime soon once they have got that potential out of the car. Um, another team who expect is going to be happy uh, on the flip side as to who will be happy, I think us are going to be coming yeah. out these first two Grand Prix. If you remember last season, that car, no matter where it qualified, even if it got a Q3 slot, as it did on the other occasion, just went backwards to the field because of the horrific rate at which it chewed through its rubber. They've got on top of that. They now know that they've actually got a reasonable, raceable car. And bearing in mind as well that they've got considerable more upgrades to place on that car over the course of this season than they did last season. I think they can be looking at definitely scoring quite a few more points than they, than they did. And Ayo Kamatsu targeted eight before the first Grand Prix in Bahrain, which even he said at the time was very optimistic. Actually, looking at these first two races there, that might not be as optimistic as he thought. And eight is definitely possible for that team. What about yourself, Nick? Winners, losers from these first two Grand Prix? I think a winner's Ferrari. I think, you know, last season it was yeah. kind of nip and tuck. Who had the second best package? Then were Mercedes. This year it's Ferrari. You know, they are the second best team to Red Bull and not too far away from them in terms of one lap pace. In terms of disappointed, I think RB, actually. I think, we, you know, going into the no, season, not. everyone was saying, you know, RB, you know, could they even challenge, you know, Aston Martin? But actually, you know, they've now had two races and no points. Yeah. You know, Daniel Ricciardo's struggling. He's spanned towards the end of the race completely on his own. Yuki made Q3 yesterday, went backwards today. So I think they've got some work to do. Um, but, you know, we're only two races in, 22 yeah. to go. Ian, as always, amazing stuff. Get your home, get yourself home safely. For everyone who's been watching our videos the last few weeks, thank you for your support. Please make sure to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments what you're thinking. You know, at some point we'll get through to answering your questions, maybe in a video, because we have got a week off now. Happy days. Ian, I'll see you later. From myself, Andy, and everyone at RacingNews365.com, we will see you later. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care now.